In this video, we're going to look at game programming using Pygame Zero. In particular, how we can add a little artificial intelligence to make a computer opponent for playing games. Now, I'm not talking about a complicated algorithm such as machine learning. Here, I'm just looking at, at basically trying to emulate what a person does when they play the game and give that kind of intelligence to uh, the computer. And the reason we're not looking at machine learning is because the type of games we're looking at it would just be inappropriate, would be over the top, and uh, really it would make a game unbeatable. And that's not what game programming is here. I'm looking at making a game so that it gives a reasonable level of difficulty. So this is uh, based on my book, um, Beginning Game Programming with Pygame Zero, which is now available. Um, but uh, and in this, uh, I'm just going to go over the uh, at, a, at quite a high level, and I'm going to give you uh, uh, show you where the source code is, which is available in the in the links underneath this video, and you can go and grab the source code if you want to, to take it further. Or of course, it's uh, explained in more detail in my book. So, to get started, I'm going to use the Mu editor. So, I'm running this on Ubuntu Linux, and uh, it's really been designed on a uh, Raspberry Pi. But as long as you can run um, Pi Game Zero, you can run it on any computer. And this is the the game that I'm going to demonstrate, which is a memory game. Um, it's a, a matching pairs memory game. You may have played this game, um, perhaps as a child, as, as a as a card game where you turn over all the cards and you have to find the matching pairs. And in this case, um, this is this is the um, final iteration I, I created for this at the moment, and I've given three different difficulties. To show you um, three different ways that we can implement this artificial intelligence, I'll, I'll quickly go through and explain we, what they do at each stage, um, and we'll, we'll see how the games play out. So the easy one is going to be a very basic game. So we're player one, the the computer is player two, and Player two, the computer, is just going to make a random guess every single time. It's not going to try and remember the cards, and we'll see how well they play. Okay, so their, their first guess has been exactly the same ones as me. So, see, I, I remembered one of the ones from before. I can't remember it's either that or that. Yeah, I got that one. Yeah, so, I'm just making guesses here um, as I was playing the game. My memory is not brilliant, but uh, I've won enough to play this game. And compared to computer, I think I've seen that somewhere, but no. Compared to the computer that is just making a random guess, um, as you can see, I've I've already got five. Um, there we go. So the computer didn't actually get any guesses there at all. I scored eight. Very easy level and very easy to beat. In fact, too easy. If you played this over and over again, you're going to quickly get bored because you just keep winning. Okay, I'll stop and restart the game here before I, I do the next one to make sure um, it's forgotten all the cards I've seen. Um, we're going to go to the other extreme here, to, to the extreme setting. In this one, um, basically the computer will remember every single card it sees and act accordingly. Its first click will be random and then its second one will be... Um, it, it will 
will be if he knows that card, it'll go straight to it. If not, then it'll be a, another random card. Just gonna play that. So So the, the first one it got right was uh, was just a random, but now as you can see, it's, it's remembering the cards well, and um, far better than I am, and it's able to just get the most of the cards. So, you know. And as you can see, it's quite easily beat me. I, I only got one pair and it's got seven. So that's what happens with the extreme. So I'm going to play it one more time now with the um, difficult setting. So in this version, the um, computer will remember sometimes, but not all cards, uh, which it's certainly, in my case, um, a bit more realistic because I don't always remember the cards I've seen. So it does look like I'm taking quite a lead in here, uh, but the computer is remembering some of them. And so, in this case, I've still won because I've got five points, um, but player two did manage to score three. So, as you can see, it's probably a, a, a little more even than the other games. Obviously, the, the Easy game, I won easily. The difficult game, the, the computer did far better, and uh, and this then uh, has been a lot more fair. All right, to uh, to see what's happening here, I'll just uh, load the um, player AI class. Um, which, as you can see, is a, a subclass of player. So if you've seen my object-oriented programming video, which is the one I released prior to this, then that's all explained there. If not, then uh, the link will be in the description. So really, it, it all comes down to this um, this one method here, which is what it's called from the um, the main program under memory.py. It calls make guess and it says what cards are still available. So it passes the, the cards that are available. And depending upon whether it's easy, difficult, or the, the final case is the extreme, it will call guess random, guess remember sometimes, and guess remember all. As its name suggests, guess random um, just uses the random choice. 
uh, remember all um, is the other extreme. In this case, um, it's got a uh, a list of um, called card memory, and it looks through that list to see if it's found that card before. So if the first card it, it returns random, the second card it tries to find to see if it knows about the matching card and where it is. And if it is, then it turns that over and it's going to win that pair. If it doesn't, then it just picks a random card again. So that's um, how it learns about all the cards. And then the third one is guess remember sometimes. Um, and in this case, um, it, it's similar to the um, guess remember all, but it has this extra element. It has uh, looks for a random number to determine whether it's going to just have a random guess, as in it's as though it's forgotten where the other card is, or whether it's going to carry on and try and find that card. And this is very similar to trying to think of how a, how a player might do that, that they might forget some cards. But it could get a little bit more realistic because if you think about it, when you're playing, if you've just turned over or just seen that card, you're more likely to remember it than if it was one that was quite a few turns ago. So although this one's not used in this particular version, there is a remember recent, which um, only looks at the last few cards that were remembered. Uh, sorry, only remembers the last few cards that were turned over. So there's, um, other things that you can do to make it more realistic. And I suggested as a, a follow on, if you wanted to take this further, is that you could maybe combine somehow the sometimes and the recent to um, create some code which remembers the, the um, cards better if it's recent than if they were older. But there's still some element of uh, randomness in both of those and to just to try and basically look at matching similar way to how the the computer the, the human player plays to make it um, feel more realistic for um, when playing against the computer hope you found that useful um I'm hoping to create another video shortly that will be looking at the other part of um, artificial intelligence that I've included in my uh, book, which is looking at how you play uh, the battleships game. And I'm going to a, a little bit about that because I think it's a quite useful concept of, of how we think when we're playing battleships and how we can emulate that in a computer and um, so if you want to see that um, please subscribe to my channel penguin tutor and um, click the the bell icon you'll get notified when the next video comes out or check back in future when i've had a chance to, to put that on um, links to the the source code and to my book and everything Will be included in the description of the video um, so you can go and find those there and you can go and have a look at the code and uh, work it out yourself and, and perhaps find improvements for it and um, please leave me any comments um, onto the video and hopefully see you next time